I think you've probably heard the word divide before, where someone tells you to divide something up, divide the money between you and your brother, or, or between uh, you and your buddy. And it essentially means to cut up something. So let me write down the word divide. Divide. So if we had, let's say that I have four quarters. Let me see, do my best to draw the quarters. If I have four quarters just like that, Oh, well, you know, that's my rendition of George Washington on the quarters. And let's say there's two of us, and we're going to divide the quarters between us. So this is me right here. Let me try my best to draw me. So that's me right there. Oh, let's see, I have a lot of hair. And then this is you right there. Uh, do my best. Let's say you're bald. You have sideburns. Maybe that looks more, let's see, maybe you have a little bit of a beard. I don't want to get too focused on the drawing. And so that's you, that's me. And we're going to divide these four quarters between the two of us. So notice, we have four quarters, four quarters. And we're going to divide between the two of us. There are two of us. Two of us. And I want to stress the number two. So we're going to divide four quarters by two. We're going to divide it between the two of us. And you've probably done something like this. What, what happens? Well, each of us are going to get two quarters. So let me divide it. We're going to divide it into two. Essentially, what I do, do is I take the four quarters, and I divide it into two equal groups. Two equal groups. And that's what division is. We cut up this group of quarters into two equal groups. So when you divide four quarters into two groups, so this was four quarters right there. Let me. So that was four quarters. And you want to divide it into two groups. This is group one. Group one right here. And this is group two right here. How many numbers? are in each group, or how many quarters are in each group? Well, in each group, I have one, two quarters. I need to use a brighter color. I have one, two quarters in each group. One quarter and two quarters in each group. So to write this out mathematically, I think this is something that you've done probably as long as you've been uh, splitting money between you and your siblings and your, your buddies. Actually, let me scroll over a little bit so you can see my entire picture. So what? how do we write this mathematically? We can write. We can write that 4 divided by, so this 4, let me use the right colors. So this 4, which is this 4, divided by the two groups. So the two groups, these are the two groups, group 1, and this is group 2 right here. So divided into two groups, or into two collections, 4 divided by 2 is equal to, when you divide 4 by, into two groups, each group is going to have two quarters in it. It's going to be equal to 2. And I just wanted to use this example because I want to show you that division is something that you've been using all along. And another important, I guess, takeaway or thing to realize about this is on some level, this is the opposite of multiplication. If I said that I had two groups, if I said that I had two groups of two quarters, I would multiply the two groups times the two quarters each, times the two quarters each, and I, I would say I would then have four quarters. So on some level, these are saying the same thing. But just to make it a little bit more concrete in our head, let's do a couple of more examples. Let's do a bunch of more examples. So let's write down, what is 6 divided by, I'll try to keep it nice and color coded, 6 divided by 3. What is that equal to? Let's just draw 6 objects. They can be anything. Let's say I have 6 six bell peppers. I won't take too much trouble to draw them. Well, that, that's not what a bell pepper looks like, but you get the idea. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to divide it by three. And one way that we can think about that is that means I want to divide my six bell peppers into three equal groups of bell peppers. You could kind of think of it if three people are going to share these bell peppers, how many do each of them get? So let's divide it into three groups. So that's our six bell peppers. I'm going to divide it into three groups. So the best way to divide it into three groups is I could have one group right there, two groups 
or the second group right there, and then the third group. And then each group, each group will have exactly how many bell peppers? They'll have one, two, one, two, one, two bell peppers. So six divided by three is equal is equal to two. So the best way, or one way to think about it, is that you divided the six into three groups. Now, you could view that a, a slightly different way, although it's, it's not completely different, but it's a good way to think about it. You could also think of it as 6 divided by 3. And once again, let's say I have, uh, well, let's say I have raspberries now. Easier to draw. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here, instead of, draw, instead of dividing it into three groups, like we did here, right? This was one group, two group three groups. Instead of dividing into three groups, what I want to do is say, well, if I'm dividing 6 divided by 3, I want to divide it into groups of 3, not into three groups. I want to divide it into groups of 3. So how many groups of 3 am I going to have? Well, let me, let me draw some groups of 3. So that is one group of 3, and that is two groups of 3. That is two groups of 3 right there. So if I take six things and I divide them into groups of three, I will end up with one, two groups. So that's another way to think about division. And this is an interesting thing. When you think about these two relations, you'll see a relationship between six divided by three and six divided by two. Let me do that right here. What is six divided by six divided by two when you think of it in this context right here? 6 divided by 2, when you do it like that, let me draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When we think about 6 divided by 2 in terms of dividing it into two groups, what we can end up is we could have one group like this, and then one group like this, and each group will have three elements. It'll have three things in it. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Or you could think of it the other way. You could say that 6 divided by 2 is you're taking six objects, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you're dividing it into groups of two, where each group has two elements. And that, on some level, is an easier thing to do. If each group has two elements, well, that's one right there. Uh, I could even, they don't even have to be nicely uh, ordered. This could be one group right there, and that could be the other group right there. I don't have to draw them all stacked up. These are just groups of two. But how many groups do I have? I have one, two, three. I have three groups. But notice something. It's no coincidence that 6 divided by 3 is 2, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Let me write that down. We get 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2, and 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. And the reason why these, you see this relation where you can kind of swap this 2 and this 3 is because 2 times 3 is equal to 6. If I have, if I have, let's say I have two groups of 3. Let me draw two groups of 3. So that's one group of 3. And then here's another group of 3. Right? That's one group of 3. And that's another group of 3. So two groups of 3 is equal to 6. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Or you could think of it the other way. If I have three groups of 2, so that's one group of 2 right there. I have another group of two right there. And then I have a third group of two right there. What is that equal to? Three groups of two, three times two, that's also equal to six. So two times three is equal to six. Three times two is equal to six. We saw this in the multiplication video that the order doesn't matter. But that's the reason why if you want to divide it, if you want to go the other way, if you have six things and you want to divide it into groups of two, you get 3. If you have 6 and you want to divide it into groups of 3, you get 2. Let's do a couple of more problems. And I think it'll really make sense about what division is all about. So let's do, let's do 9. Let's do an interesting one. Let's do 9 divided by 4. So if we think about 9 divided by 4, let me draw 9 objects. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now when you divide by 4, I'm going to think in this, in this, for this problem, I'm going to think about it into dividing it into groups of 4. 
So if I want to divide it into groups of four, let me try doing that. So here is one group of four. I just picked any of them, right, like that. That's one group of four. Then here's another group of four right there. And then I have this leftover thing. Maybe we could call it a remainder, where I don't have, I can't divide, put this one into a group of four. When I'm dividing by four, I can only put, I can only cut up the nine into groups of four. So the answer here, and this is a new concept for you, maybe, nine divided by four is going to be two groups, right? I have one group here another group here, and then I have a remainder of one. I have one left over that I wasn't able to do with. Remainder, remainder, that says remainder, 1. 9 divided by 4 is 2 remainder 1. If I asked you what 12 divided by 4 is, let me do 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So let me write that down. Twelve divided by 4. So I want to try to divide these 12 objects, maybe they're apples or plums, and divide them into groups of 4. So let me see if I can do that. So this is one group of 4, just like that. This is another group of 4, just like that. And this is pretty straightforward. And then I have a third group of 4. Just like that. And there's nothing left over like I had before. That I can exactly divide 12 objects into three groups of four, right? One, two, three groups of four. So 12 divided by four is equal to, is equal to three. And we could do the exercise that we saw in the previous video. What is 12 divided by three? Let me do a new color. 12 divided by three. Now, based on what we learned so far, we say, oh, well, that should just be 4, because 3 times 4 is 12. But let's prove it to ourselves. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's divide it into groups of 3. And I'm going to make them a little strange looking, just so you say, see that you don't always have to do it into nice, clean columns. So that's a group of 3 right there, 12 divided by 3. Let's see, here is a. Here's another group of three, just like that. And then maybe I'll take this group of three, like that. And then I'll take this group of three. There's obviously a much easier way of dividing it up than doing these weird L-shaped things. But I want to show you it doesn't matter. You're just dividing it into groups of three. And how many groups do we have? We have one group. And then we have our second group right here. And then we have our third group right there. And then we have, let me do it in a new color, and then we have our fourth group right there. So we have exactly four groups. And when I say there was an easier way to divide, the easier way was obviously, or maybe not obviously, if I wanted to divide these into groups of three, I could have just done one, two, three, four groups of three. Either of these, I'm dividing the 12 objects into packets of three. You can imagine them that way. Let's do another one that maybe has a remainder. Let's see. What is, what is 14 divided by, divided by 5? So let's draw 14 objects. 14 objects. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 objects. And I'm going to divide into groups of five. So let me draw, well, the easiest thing is there's one group right there, two groups right there. But then this last one, I only have four left. So I can't make another group of five. So the answer here is I can make two groups of five, and I'm going to have a remainder, r for remainder, of four. Two remainder four. Now, once you get enough practice, you're not always going to be wanting to draw these circles and dividing them up like that, although that would not be incorrect. So another way to think about this type of problem is to say, well, 14 divided by 5, how do I figure that out? And actually, another way of writing this, and no, no harm in showing you, I could say 14 divided by 5 is the same thing as 14 divided by this sign right here, divided by 5. And what you do is you say, well, let's see, how many times does 5 go into 14? Well, let's see, 5 times, and you kind of do multiplication tables in your head. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. 5 times 2 is equal to 10. So that's still less than 14. So 5 goes at least 2 times. 
5 times 3 is equal to 15. Well, that's bigger than 14, so I have to go back here. So 5 only goes 2 times. So it goes 2 times. 2 times 5 is 10. And then you subtract. You say 14 minus 10 is 4. And that's the same remainder as right here. Well, I could divide 5 into 14 exactly 2 times, which would get us 2 groups of 5, which is essentially just 10. But we still have the 4 left over. We still have the 4 left over just like that. Let me do a couple of more, just to really make sure you, you get this stuff really, 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 really well. So let's say that I have, let me write it in that notation. Let's say I would do 8 divided by 2. And I could also write this as 8, so I, I want to know what that is. That's a question mark. I could also write this as 8 divided by 2. And the way I do either of these, I'll draw the circles in the second, but the way I do it without doing a second, without drawing the circles, I say, well, 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So that definitely goes into 8. But maybe I can think of a larger number that goes into, uh, that when I multiply it by 2 still goes into 8. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. That's still less than 8. So 2 times 3 is equal to 6, still less than 8. 2 times. 2 times, oh, something weird happened with my pen. 2 times 4 is exactly equal to 8. So 2 goes into 8 4 times. So I could say 2 goes into 8 4 times. Or 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. And we can even draw our circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I drew a messy on purpose. And let's divide them into groups of 2. I have 1 group of 2, 2 groups of 2, 3 groups of 2. 2, 4 groups of 2. So if you have 8 objects, divide them into groups of 2, you have 4 groups. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Hopefully you found that helpful. Let's now see if we can divide into larger numbers. And just as a starting point, in order to divide into larger numbers, you at least need to know your multiplication tables from the 1 multiplication tables all the way to at least the 10 multiplications, all the way up to 10 times 10, which you know is 100, uh, you know, starting at 1 times 1 and going up to you know 2 times 3, all the way up to 10 times 10. Uh, and at least when I was in school, we learned through 12 times 12. But 10 times 10 will uh, probably do the trick. Uh, and that's really just the starting point. Because to do multiplication problems like this, for or division problems like this, let's say I'm taking 25 and I want to divide it by 5. So I could draw 25 objects and then divide them into groups of 5 or divide them into 5 groups and see how many elements are in each group. But the quick way to do it is just to think about, well, 5 times what is 25, right? 5 times question mark is equal to 25. And if you know your multiplication tables, especially your 5 multiplication tables, you know that 5 times 5 is equal to 25. So something like this, you'll immediately just be able to say, because of your, your knowledge of multiplication, that 5 goes into 25 five times. And you'd write the 5 right there, not over the 2, because you still want to be careful of the place notation. You want to write the 5 in the ones place. It goes into it five ones times, or exactly five times. And the same thing, if I said 7, 7 goes into 49. That's how many times? Well, you say that's like saying 7 times what? You could even, instead of a question mark, you could put a blank there. 7 times what is equal to 49. And if you know your multiplication tables, you know that 7 times 7 is equal to 49. All the examples I've done so far is a number multiplied by itself. Let me do another example. Let me do 9 goes into 54. How many times? Once again, you need to know your multiplication tables to do this. 9 times what is equal to 54. And sometimes, even if you don't have it memorized, you can say, well, let's see, 9 times 5 is 45. And let's see, 9 times 6 would be 9 more than that. So that would be 54. So 9 goes into 54 six times. So just as a starting point, you need to have your multiplication tables from 1 times 1 all the way up to 10 times 10 memorized in order to be able to do uh, at least these, uh, some of these more basic problems relatively, relatively quickly. Now, with that out of the way, let's try to do some problems that might not fit completely cleanly into your multiplication tables. So let's say I want to divide. I am looking to divide 3. I'm looking to divide 3 into 43. 
And once again, I mean, this is larger than 3 times 10 or 3 times 12. Actually, let, well, let, let, me, let me do another problem. Let me do 3 into 23. And if you know your 3 times tables, you'll realize that there's 3 times nothing is exactly 23. I'll do it right now. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Let me just write them all out. 3 times 3 is 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Right? There's no 23 in the multiples of 3. So how do you do this division problem? Well, what you do is you think of what is the largest multiple of 3 that does go into 23? And that's 21. And 3 goes into 21 how many times? Well, you know that 3 times 7 is equal to 21. So you say, well, 3 will go into 23 7 times. But it doesn't go into it cleanly, because 7 times 3 is 21. So there's a remainder left over. So if you take 23 minus 21, you have a remainder of 2. So you could write that 23 divided by 3 is equal to 7 remainder, maybe I'll just I'll write the whole word out, remainder remainder 2. So it doesn't have to go in completely cleanly. And in the future, we'll learn about decimals and fractions. But for now, you just say, well, it goes in cleanly 7 times. But that only gets us to 21. But then there's 2 left over. So you can even work with the division problems where it's not exactly a multiple of the number that you're dividing into the larger number. But let's do some practice with even larger numbers. Even larger numbers. And I think you'll see a pattern here. So let's do. Let's do 4, 4 going into, I'm going to pick a pretty large number here, 344. And immediately when you see that, you might say, hey, Sal, you know, I know up to 4 times 10 or 4 times 12. 4 times 12 is 48. This is a much larger number. This is way out of bounds of what I know in my four multiplication tables. And what I'm going to show you right now is a way of doing this, just knowing your four multiplication tables. So what you do is you say 4 goes into this 3. 4 goes into this 3 how many times? And you're actually saying 4 goes into this 3 how many hundred times? So this is, because this is 300, right? This is 344. But 4 goes into 3 no hundred times. Or 4 goes into, I guess the best way to think of it, 4 goes into 3 zero times. So you can just move on. 4 goes into 34. So now we're going to focus on. We're just going to focus on the 34. So 4 goes into 34 how many times? And here we can use our four multiplication tables. 4, let's see, 4 times 8 is equal to 32. 4 times 9 is equal to 36. So 4 goes into 34. 39 is too many times, right? 36 is larger than 34. So 4 goes into 34 8 times. There's going to be a little bit left over. 4 goes into 34. 8 times. So let's figure out what's left over. And really, we're saying 4 goes into 340 how many 10 times? So we're actually saying 4 goes into 340 80 times. Because notice, we wrote this 8 in the tens place. But just for our ability to do this problem quickly, you just say, OK, 4 goes into 34 8 times. But make sure you write the 8 in the tens place right there. 8 times 4, we already know what that is. 8 times 4 is 32. And then we figure out the remainder. 34 minus 32, well, 4 minus 2 is 2. And then these 3's cancel out. So you're just left with a 2. But notice, we're in the tens column, right? This whole column right here, that's the tens column. So really what we said is 4 goes into 340 eight, 80 times. 80 times 4 is 320, right? Because I wrote it in the 3 in the hundreds column. And then there is, and I don't want to make this look like a, I don't want to make this look like a, let me clean this up a little bit. I didn't want to make that line there look like a, when I was dividing the columns like a 1. But then there's a remainder of 2, but I wrote the 2 in the tens place. So it's actually a remainder of 20. But let me bring down this 4, because I didn't want to just divide into 340. I divided into 344. So you bring down the 4. Let me switch colors. And then, so another way to think about it, we just said that 4 goes into 344 80 times. right? We wrote the 8 in the tens place. And then 8 times 4 is 320. The remainder is now 24. So how many times does 4 go into 24? Well, we know that. 4 times 6 is equal to 24. So 4 goes into 24 6 times. And we put that in the ones place. 6 times 4 is 24. 
And then we subtract 24 minus 24. That's we subtract at that stage, either case. And we get 0. So there's no remainder. So 4 goes into 344 exactly 86 times. So if you took 344 objects and divided them into groups of 4, you'd get 86 groups. Or if you divided them into groups of 86, you would get 4 groups. Let's do a couple of more problems. I think you're getting the hang of it. Let me do 7. I'll do a simple one. 7 goes into 91. So once again, well, this is beyond 7 times 12, which is 84, which we know from our multiplication table. So uh, we use the same system we did in the last problem. 7 goes into 9 how many times? 7 goes into 9 one time. 1 times 7 is 7. Then you have 9 minus 7 is 2. And then you bring down the 1. 21. And remember, this might seem like magic, but we really said 7 goes into 90 10 times. 10, because we wrote the 1 in the tens place. 10 times 7 is 70. Right? You could almost put a 0 there if you like. And 90 with a remain, 91 minus 70 is 21. So 7 goes into 91 10 times, remainder 21. And then you say 7 goes into 21. Well, you know that. 7 times 3 is 21. So 7 goes into 21. 3 times, 3 times 7 is 21. You subtract these from each other, remainder 0. So 91 divided by 7 is equal to 13. Let's do another one. And I won't, I won't take that little break to explain the places and all of that. I think you understand that. I, I want at least you to get the process down really, really well in this video. So let's do 7. Well, I keep using the number 7. Let me do a different number. Let me do. Let me do 8 goes into 608 how many times? So I go 8 goes into 6 how many times? It goes into it 0 times, so let me keep moving. 8 goes into 60 how many times? Well, let me write down the 8. Let me draw a line here so we don't get confused. Let me scroll down a little bit. I need some space above the number. So 8 goes into 60 how many times? We know that 8 times 7 is equal to 56, and that 8 times 8 is equal to 64. So 8 goes into 64 is too big, so it's not this one. So 8 goes into 67 times. There's going to be a little bit left over. So 8 goes into 67 times. Since we're doing the whole 60, we put the 7 above the 1's place in the 60, which is the 10's place in the whole thing. 7 times 8, we know, is 56. 60 minus 56, that's 4. We could do that in our heads, or if we wanted, we can borrow. That would be a 10. That would be a 5. 10 minus 6 is 4. Then you bring down this 8. You bring down that 8. 8 goes into 48 how many times? Well, what's 8? What is 8 times 6? Well, 8 times 6 is exactly 48. So 8 times 8 goes into 48 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. And you subtract. We subtract it up here as well. 48 minus 48 is 0. So once again, we get a remainder of 0. So hopefully, uh, that gives you the hang of how to do these larger division problems. And all we really need to know to be able to do these, to tackle these, is our multiplication tables up to maybe 10 times 10 or 12 times 12. Never hurts to get a lot of practice. So in this video, I'm just going to do a bunch more of essentially what we call long division problems. And so if you have 4 goes into 2,292. And I don't know why exactly why they call it long division. And we were we saw this in the last video a little bit. I didn't call it long division then. But I think the reason why is you could think it, it takes you a long time, or it takes a it takes a long piece of your paper. Or you kind of as you go al you uh, along, you kind of have this thing that get this long tail that develops on the problem. So all of those are at least reasons in my head why it's called long division. But we saw in the last video that it's a way to tackle any division problem while just knowing your multiplication tables up to maybe 10 times 10 or 12 times 12. But just as a bit of review, this is the same thing as 2,292 divided by 4. And it's actually the same thing, and you probably haven't seen this notation before, as 2,292 divided by 4. These, this, this, and this are all equivalent statements on some level. 
And as you can see, you say, hey, Sal, that looks like a fraction, in case you have seen fractions already. And that is exactly what it is. It is a fraction. But anyway, I'll just focus on this format. And in future videos, we'll think about other ways to represent division. So let's do this problem. So 4 goes into 2 how many times? It goes into no times. So let's move on to, let me switch colors. So let's move on to the 22. 4 goes into 22 how many times? Let's see, 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is equal to 20. 4 times 6 is equal to 24. So 6 is too much. So 4 goes into 22 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. There's going to be a little bit of a leftover. And then we subtract. 22 minus 20, well, that's just 2. And then you bring down this 9. And you saw in the last video exactly what this means, right? When you wrote this 5 up here, notice we wrote in the hundreds place. So this is really a 500. But in this video, I'm just going to focus more on the process. And you can think more about what it actually means in terms of where I'm writing the numbers. But I think the process is going to be crystal clear, hopefully, by the end of this video. So we brought down the 9. 4 goes into 29 how many times? Let's see, 4. It goes into at least 6 times. What's 4 times 7? 4 times 7 is 28. So it goes into it at least 7 times. What's 4 times 8? 4 times 8 is 32. So it can't go into it 8 times, so it's going to go to it 7. 4 goes into 29 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. 29 minus 28, to get our remainder for this step in the problem, is 1. And now we're going to bring down this 2. We're going to bring it down. And you get a 12. 4 goes into 12. That's easy. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 goes into 12. 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. We have no remainder. So 4 goes into 2,292 exactly 573 times. So this 2,292 divided by 4, we can say is equal to 573. Or we could say that this thing right here is equal to 573. Let's do a couple more. Let's do a few more problems. Let me pick a nice, so let me do that red color. So say we had 7. 7 going into 6,475. Maybe it's called long division, because you write it nice and long up here, and you have this line. I don't know. Uh, there, there's multiple reasons why it could be called long division. So you say 7 goes into 6 zero times. So we need to keep moving forward. So 7, so then we go to 64. 7 goes into 64. How many times? Let's see, 7. 7 times 7 is, well, that's way too small. Let me think about it a little bit. Well, 7 times 9 is 63. That's pretty close. And then 7 times 10 is going to be too big. 7 times 10 is 70. So that's too big. So 7 goes into 64 9 times. 9 times 7 is 63. 64 minus 63 to get our remainder at this stage is 1. Bring down the 7. Bring down the 7. 7 goes into 17 how many times? Well, 7 times 2 is 14. And then 7 times 3 is 21. So 3 is too big. So 7 goes into 17 2 times. 2 times 7 is 14. 17 minus 14 is 3. And now we bring down the 5. We bring down the 5. And 7 goes into 35. That's in our 7 multiplication tables. 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. And there you go. And so the remainder is 0. So all the, all the examples I did so far had no remainders. Let's do one that maybe might have a remainder. And to ensure it has a remainder, I'll just make up the problem. It's much easier to make problems that have remainders than the ones that don't have remainders. So let's say I want to divide 3. Let's say I want to divide 3 into, I'm going to divide it into, let's say, 1, 7, 3, 5, 0, 9, 2. This will be a nice, beastly problem. So if we can do this, we can handle everything. So this is 1,735,092. That's what we're dividing 3 into. So. 3 goes, and actually, I'm not sure if this will have a remainder. And in the future video, I'll show you whether, uh, whether how to figure out whether something is divisible by 3. Actually, we can do it right now. We just add up all these digits. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 3 
is 11. 11 plus 5 is 16. 16 plus 9 is 25. 25 plus 2 is 27. So actually, this number is divisible by 3. So if you add up all of the digits, you get 27. And then you can add up those digits. 2 plus 7 is 9. So that is divisible by 9. And that's a trick that only works for 3. So this number actually is divisible by 3. So let me, let me change it a little bit so it's not divisible by 3. Uh, let, me put a, let, me make this into a, let me make this into a 1. Now this number will not be divisible by 3. I definitely want a number where I'll end up with a remainder, just, to, just so you see what it looks like. So let's do this one. 3 goes into 1, 0 times. So we can just move forward. You could write a 0 here and multiply that out, and, but that just makes it a little bit messy in my head. So 3, so we just move 1 to the right. 3 goes into 17 how many times? Well, 3 times 5 is equal to 15. And 3 times 6 is equal to 18, and that's too big. So 3 goes into 17, or right here, 5 times. 5 times 3 is 15, and we subtract. 17 minus 15 is 2. And now we bring down this 3. Set 3 goes into 23 how many times? Well, 3 times 7 is equal to 21. And 3 times 8 is too big. That's equal to 24. So 3 goes into 23 seven times. Seven times. Seven times 3 is 21. And we subtract. 23 minus 21 is 2. Now we bring down the next number. We bring down the 5. I think you can appreciate why it's called long division now. We bring down this 5. 3 goes into 25 how many times? Well, 20, 3 times 8 gets you pretty close. And 3 times 9 is too big. So it goes into it 8 times. 8 times 3 is 24. I'm going to run out of space. You subtract, you get 1. 25 minus 24 is 1. Now we can bring down this 0. You bring down this 0, just like that. And you get 3 goes into 10 how many times? Well, that's easy. It goes into it 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. That's about as close to 10 as we can get. 3 times 3 is 9. 10 minus 9, I'm going to have to scroll up and down here a little bit. 10 minus 9 is 1. And then we can bring down the next number. I'm running out of colors. I can bring down that 9. 3 goes into 19 how many times? Well, 6 is about as close as we can get. That gets to 18. So 3 times 6. 3 goes into 19 6 times. 6 times 3. Let me scroll down. 6 times 3 is 18. 19 minus 18, we subtracted up here too. 19 minus 18 is 1. And then we're almost done. I can revert back to the pink. We bring down this 1 right there. And bring down that 1. 3 goes into 11 how many times? Well, that's 3 times, because 3 times 4 is too big. It's 3, uh, 3 times 4 is 12, so that's too big. So it goes into 3 times. So 3 goes into 11 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we subtract, and we get a. 2. And there's nothing left to bring down. right? And when we look up here, there's nothing left to bring down. So we're done. So we're left with a remainder of 2 after doing this entire problem. So the answer, 3 goes into 1,735,091. It goes into it 578,363 remainder 2. And that remainder 2 is what we got all the way down there. So hopefully you now appreciate that you can tackle pretty much any division problem. And you also, through this exercise, can appreciate why it's called long division.